Don't write as if you're writing an ad write as if you're talking to a friend. What is up UGC creators? If you're new to my channel, my name is Danae. I am a copywriter and creative strategist. So I work on the brand side of things and have a couple videos on my channel already where I give tips to UGC creators on what creative strategists or founders are looking for when they want to hire a creator. So how you can stand out and also make more money. But in this video, I wanna get into the nitty gritty and talk about script writing because that is a big part of your work as a creator. Some brands share briefs, other brands don't. And just as much as your visual creativity and cadence and tone and vibe on camera is important, the copywriting is equally important because that will make or break whether the ad actually converts or the organic UGC content converts. So as I said, because I'm a copywriter and I work as a creative strategist, I've written hundreds of ad scripts, definitely over 500. Like in the past year alone, I've written one every single day for the brands that I work with or if I wasn't writing one, I was reviewing or editing creators uh, script. So everything I'm going to share is from experience, literally off the top of my head. I have a few notes here that I thought about when I decided to make this video and I'm just gonna kind of riff off whatever comes to mind. I'm really excited. Um, so if you're interested in marketing, kind of leveling up in the UGC space, definitely consider subscribing to my channel. And I also have a newsletter, it's called the Digital Marketing Diaries. I share tidbits about my life as a solopreneur in marketing and also copywriting tips for creators freelancers, brand owners, and that sort of thing. It's always in the description and all my social media as well. So when I'm coming up with a script from scratch, and let's say the brand doesn't send you a brief or is very open with what you bring to the table, I always think about what the hook is first because the hook becomes the angle for me. And I really base the whole script off of, okay, so let's use the slip liner as the product. Let's just say it's waterproof and it would just stays all day. No matter what you do, you eat, you drink, you talk, it stays on, it stays on all day. You can have an angle that's like, get ready with me, right? That could be the angle, but the hook then really defines the script. How are we going to get people interested to even get ready with me to talk about this lip liner, right? So I'll start to visualize and kind of think about the target audience. Hopefully the brand has said that information, the target audience, what they would really care about, what would really matter is the problem that they're having Thing. So they might be a student and they want to make sure their lip liner is on all day long or they might work at a restaurant or I don't know some there's there's so many different angles you could take what's coming to mind for me right now literally off the top of my head is a date night going on a first date and having your lip liner stay on all day throughout the dinner maybe you have a kiss it stays on after that too let's say that is now the more specific angle that we're getting into. Get ready with me for a date night and let's see how long this lip liner lasts. Now you have that, then you can get into writing out a bunch of different hooks that you think would resonate with this person that might care about having their lip liner stay on all day long at a date. So you could do a ne negative hook. I would never use this lip liner, which not the brands, but another one. I would never use this lip liner if I was going on a first date again. Or you could do a hook like, this lip liner stayed on for my 24 hour date. Get ready with me for a second date. And then you kind of share the story about a second date for like five seconds and then you get into the lip liner, that kind of thing. You know what I mean? Hopefully that's clear. So I'll think about the angle and then I'll think about the deeper angle or concept and then I'll start to brainstorm hooks. And from there, usually, you know, when you're submitting your UGC, you might do three hooks, you might do four hooks, two hooks, whatever the case is, you'll think about that and you can maybe pull out. So let's say you write 10, you can then pull out the top three and go from there. So as much as that verbal hook is really important, what's also important is the visual hook. So you can actually say a, a verbal hook and have different text on screen and then visuals that maybe juxtapose all of that. You know what I mean? So. Your visual hook is equally important and something you should also think about when you're writing your verbal hooks. When I'm thinking about this random get ready with me idea that, I, that I've come up with, I'm imagining a girl sitting in front of her vanity, you know, she plops her phone down, maybe she's wearing a nice dress or maybe she's about to curl her hair or she's like in the middle of doing the lip liner as she's talking. I'm imagining that as I write the hooks so then we can seamlessly incorporate all of this together, right? Like she could be in an Uber, but it's just the backseat of her own car. Like there's so many ways to make it intriguing and what we would call in marketing a pattern interrupt. So, you know, there's tons of videos people are scrolling through. What's gonna actually make them stop and be like, whoa, this is kind of crazy. Like this girl is in an Uber doing a get ready with me 
da 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 like that kind of thing, like an Alex Earl effect or, or something along those lines. So it's really important to think about the visual hook as well. What kind of visuals are you going to use in the first three to five seconds to make it intriguing, but also match what you're saying? Now, it's so important to ensure that your visual hook is not too far off from what you're actually promoting because there are a lot of crazy visual hooks you could make that could stop the scroll that could interrupt the pattern but if people then continue people then see that the video is not about what they initially stopped for it's going to the watch time is going to be low and the cpc is going to be high so this is important just because you can put some crazy visual hook doesn't mean you should it should always match and you can play around with things there are a lot of brands that do fun things like for example your sunscreen brand you want to show how well your sunscreen works a lot of brands i see have been doing putting sunscreen on like a toast on a piece of toast and then toasting it and then you can see like where's burnt and where they have the sunscreen where they don't but that's like a crazy visual hook that's like whoa what's what's this i'm gonna i'm intrigued and maybe the text on screen says something about sunscreen so it makes it make sense and then you watch the video and then you learn about the sunscreen that kind of thing so make sure to think about your visual and verbal hooks simultaneously and be open think of as many ideas as possible then narrow it down to the top three by thinking as if you were the target audience. U UGC creation is not just about coming onto camera and making quirky little videos and going about your day if you want to make it a full-time career. Then you need to create concepts and write scripts that convert. And in order to do that, you really need to take time to do the research and think about things, especially if the brands are not already handing you briefs and that, and that sort of thing. And what's amazing is that if you become, if your ad really works, chances are the brand is going to continue coming back for more videos because the creators play a big role you can have two creators do the same video and one creator will just resonate more with the audience that's just how things work sometimes so if you end up being that creator by you know coming up with a cool concept and also having a1 visuals and whatnot you can secure retainers and have clients work with you long term the next thing that you want to think about after the hook is what I like to call the second hook or the lead. You know, everyone talks about the hook. Maybe you didn't even learn anything from what I just said. Hopefully you, you did, but nobody talks about after the hook because people are going to click off. As a creative strategist, I know that majority of people aren't watching after like 20, 30 seconds of an ad. If you have, you know, a watch rate that's really high, that means you're doing something extremely good. But if you want to increase watch time, you need to start thinking honestly about every sentence as a hook but especially what comes right after your original hook so three to five seconds is your original hook then up to the 15 second mark you should treat as another hook and what i like to do is ensure that whatever phrase you're saying after the hook seamlessly guides in but there's still some stuff left out so there's like curiosity building so let's say we went with the example of Get ready with me while I talk about how this lip liner ruined my first date with a guy. So I might say something after that line like, but can we talk about how nerve wracking going on a first date is? That's why I love to use makeup products that make me feel confident because that's probably a pillar of what, you know, the brand wants to talk about in terms of having lip liner that stays on you all day long so you can feel confident all day long, that kind of thing. Just drop, like, it doesn't immediately scream ad when you say, but can we talk about how nerve wracking a first date is? I was literally shaking and then go into, that's why when I'm putting on makeup, I want it to last all day long so I can just focus on, you know, getting to know them and not whether my lip liner is smudged everywhere that kind of thing. And that in and of itself is another hook to guide people into the storyline. Now we're using some storytelling and we're guiding people into what we have to say about this particular lip liner that we said something negative about in the beginning. And for this example, you could probably like actually use the brand's lip liner as the one that you say, I would never use this again, and go into the fact that it stayed on for three days straight because it's so good, that kind of thing. So it's so important to think about the next 10 seconds after the five second hook, both visual and verbal, as a second hook, as a lead into the meat of the ad. Because if you get people watching until after that point, chances are they're going to click on the product and look into it more. Maybe they're not gonna buy, but they're gonna at least click onto it or add it to their cart. And that's what we want. We want to get them to stay. So we need to be strategic. So I would say storytelling is really important for this but also thinking of maybe a second hook. So what you can do is look at your list of 10 hooks that you put on your sheet and see if you can say one of those 10 hooks after the hook in a way that 
is seamless. That doesn't seem like, oh, you're, you're just like saying random stuff. It's, it's like a seamless transition. See if there's a way you can mend that. So that's why I think in the beginning, the data and the research is really important. Coming up with a bunch of visual ideas, a bunch of hook ideas, and then using those throughout the ad to ensure that people will continue watching because they're so curious, because there's so much strategic copy being used all the way through. So after you finish this first 15 second part of the script, then you would get into the meat of it, which sometimes is referred to as the base of the script. And this is where you usually start to state the problem. So maybe you go through your storyline, oh my goodness, I want to feel confident. I don't want to feel like I'm thinking about whether my lip liner is smudged. I've used literally 25 different lip liners before, holds up 25 different lip liners, and none of them lasts after I eat, after I drink, but this one stayed on for 25, like, you know, just go off and talk about how amazing the product is. Stating the problem is really important, obviously, but I think a lot of times creators and even sometimes brand owners miss what the problem actually is and or they stick to the problem too long that you want to state the problem but you don't want to drive into it and make the whole thing about the problem because as a woman if you care about lip liner you know yeah there most lip liners are bad it's amazing to find one that lasts all day long and is the perfect color and feels good and blah 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 so just add it in there and continue on sharing the good news sharing the tea that they want that they want to know about girl tell me what this lip liner actually is and why i should get it you know and then on the flip side sometimes we have the wrong problem so we might think that the problem is that the lip liner doesn't last all day but the problem is that there are a lot of lip liners that last all day but they never have my shade but thankfully this one that we're promoting has 40 different shades, so you're guaranteed to have that. So you should focus on sharing that specific part of the problem rather than the fact that it's long lasting, if that makes sense. So it's like the unique mechanism or the thing that separates this brand that you're promoting from others. So maybe the brand gives you this information. If they don't, you can, again, increase the chances of it performing better by doing your research and really digging into this audience and what they truly care about and incorporating that into the script which will again make them continue watching longer which is the goal or have them click onto the website obviously all of this comes down to working with brands that actually have good products because that helps if there's a bad product people are not going to buy it but if that's out of the way you're, you're promoting a good product all of these little details will make such a big difference especially when it comes to paid advertising so i have on my notes the next step after the problem is the solution the unique mechanism and you can see why i said not to drag out the problem too much because you can easily pair the problem solution and unique mechanism into like one or two sentences i used to go to sephora and see that there are so many lip liners that are long lasting, but they never had shades for me. This brand literally has 40 shades. It matches the exact lip shade I was looking for and it lasts 24 hours because of this natural ingredient they put in it that sticks to your lip skin, da, 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 something like that, you know what I mean? You can easily share that in two seconds rather than dragging on the fact that, you know, there are 50 brands in Sephora and all of them are only last 10 hours, but then there was this brand and that brand, instead of dragging it on, just grouping everything in together seamlessly while keeping it authentic and actually giving them the information that they want, that will make them click add to cart or purchase because, oh my goodness, it has this natural ingredient that's meant to stick to the skin on your lip. Those little details in your script writing make all the difference. What words are you using? I find that a lot of times when people are writing scripts, they write as if they're writing an ad. Write as if you're talking to a friend or you're the person who would buy it and how you would explain it to someone if you wanted to sell it to them. Like, girl, you should buy this or boy, you should buy this, it's really good. I talk about this in my most recent video about UGC. You really wanna have a cadence and tone. That's not like you're, a brand is paying you to make some commercial for them. That's authentic, that feels like user-generated content. It feels like someone opened up TikTok and is talking about how amazing a product is, even if that's not the case. Now, next part of your script, you will usually include some sort of social proof or testimonial. You don't always need to include these aspects. You don't need to stick to, there's a lot of these like modular formats that people talk about and stick to, which are great, but you don't always need to include them in every single script. Because this one, this example one that I'm sharing is a very visual and you're showing examples. Maybe she's including photos of her in the beginning of the night, at the end of the night, and is talking about her next date and that kind of thing. You don't necessarily need to include a ton of social proof because it's like that is the social proof. And the testimonial could be a quick sentence at the end of the video being like, 
if I could subscribe to this lip liner for the rest of my life, I would. Or I've never purchased a second lip liner before it finished, but I will be doing that for this one or something like that, you know? It's like authentic and it's a testimonial to the brand and how well it works, but it doesn't feel again like an ad. You can save that advertising feel for the CTA. You can click the link below to purchase your lip liner. You won't regret it something corny like that. Those CTAs are really important. You have to tell people what to do. That's just how it works. We've A-B tested a lot of ads where you have a clear CTA, you don't have a CTA, people don't click it because you didn't say to click it. Click, tell them to click it, whatever, but you can save that salesiness for the end of the video. Chances are, again, if they watch, they're going to click it anyways, right? But yeah, you can mix and match the testimonial or the social proof in terms of it being very visual or actually showing testimonials from the website. It all depends on the brand that you're working with, but you don't always need to include it depending on the angle if it's going to throw off the feel of what you have going on. So yeah, hopefully me sharing my thought process when I go about writing ad scripts was helpful for you. If it was, let me know in the comments and maybe some questions I'm happy to answer or do a part two maybe where I go in depth and write a script live or something like that. Bye.